In September 10th, 2015 journal eLife has published a data of Homo naledi discovery by popular paleoanthropologist Lee R. Berger. The unearthing of a new species of early human ancestor, Homo naledi in South Africa, challenged our understanding of human evolution. This event raised the thorny question of where humanity really came from, and our episode today is dedicated to this exciting topic. Watch this video to the end and you'll learn what scientists are hiding from us. Who created the solar system? Whether humans are really the first intelligent beings on our planet? And how and by whom the previous intelligent species on Earth were wiped out? So let's get started. We'll be broken up in the open field. In the uncharted realms of human history and evolution, mysteries linger that challenge our understanding of the origins of life on Earth. Delving into the archives of ancient civilizations and untold epochs, we uncover enigmatic narratives that defy conventional explanations. This journey takes us beyond the realms of traditional paleontology, venturing into the contentious territories of extraterrestrial influence, ancient wars of gods, and the puzzling remnants of bygone civilizations. Welcome to a narrative that transcends the ordinary, beckoning us to question our place in the grand tapestry of the cosmos. So let's go over some facts you probably didn't know. Extraterrestrial trace solar systems are born from supernova explosions when a star seemingly sheds its old shell. And from this matter, from the chaos of dust, new planets are born. Born from chaos, theoretically, they should rotate chaotically in different planes on orbits from circles to elongated ellipses. But in our solar system, the planets rotate in one plane. The orbits are close to circular. This suggests that their orbits and rotation planes were artificially aligned. This was done to prevent collisions between planets and planetary catastrophes. Thus, a single glance at our unusual planetary system is enough to understand the obvious fact. Our solar system was artificially created by some external advanced and powerful forces with the purpose of populating it with intelligent life. A few moons. The prevailing theory supported by the scientific community is the giant impact hypothesis, which suggests that the moon formed when an object smashed into the early Earth. But there are bolder concepts out there. The idea that Earth once had more moons than its current solitary companion has sparked both scientific theories and fantastical stories for centuries. Double Moon Hypothesis of 2011 proposed that Earth might have had two moons early in its formation, formed from debris of a giant impact. The smaller moon, named Theia b, is hypothesized to have eventually collided with the larger one, our current moon, in a slow-motion event, merging into the single body we see today. In addition, some scientists suggest that Earth might have captured smaller moons throughout its history, similar to how Mars is believed to have captured its moons Phobos and Deimos. Writings and folklore from various cultures, like the Babylonians and the Hindus, mention multiple moons or celestial bodies orbiting Earth. While these could be misinterpreted observations of astronomical phenomena or symbolic representations, they contribute to the intrigue surrounding the idea. In this light, the theory of some researchers becomes intriguing that the debris from one of the shattered moons of Earth, when it fell onto our planet, caused massive tsunamis that destroyed the legendary Atlantis. This event could well have triggered a shift in the Earth's axis, and the tsunamis and floods could have been the very event described as the global flood in the Bible and numerous other epics from various ancient civilizations. The mysterious land of Hyperborea Theories and hypotheses about Hyperborea have been the subject of speculation and fascination. The concept of Hyperborea is rooted in ancient Greek mythology and has been linked to various ideas and beliefs. There has been speculation over the ages that Hyperborea could be a real place on Earth. Some have sought to identify its location, with theories ranging from Scandinavia to Siberia. In modern esoteric thought, Hyperborea has been associated with the polar origins of mankind and a subsequent solidification and devolution as believed by certain scholars and thinkers. 
The myths about Hyperborea have led to the idea that its natural environment could have given rise to a certain type of people and a distinct culture or advanced civilization, sparking the interest of researchers and thinkers. In particular, there is a hypothesis that the Indo-European culture has its origins in Hyperborea, which is examined in the light of ancient hymns, legends, beliefs, and customs that have been preserved for thousands of years. The exploration of Hyperborea invites us to reconsider the narrative of human development, hinting at the possibility of ancient advanced civilizations that might have played a pivotal role in shaping the cultural and technological landscape of our planet. Are we not the first? There is every reason to believe that the current earthly civilization is far from the first on our planet. The previous ones perished in the ancient War of the Gods, leaving us a warning in the form of myths and remnants of ancient megalithic structures. In India, researchers point to the ruins of the ancient city of Mohenjo-Daro, the Harappan civilization in the Indus Valley. It is believed that this city was destroyed by a nuclear explosion during the so-called War of the Gods, according to supporters of the paleo-contact theory and those who believe in the existence of ancient civilizations on Earth with advanced godlike technologies. This conclusion was reached by Erich von Daniken, Andrei Skliarov, and many other alternative researchers. They also refer to Vedic myths, which vividly describe both the War of the Gods itself and the consequences of the use of godly weapons. Archaeologists, the most famous researcher of Mohenjo-Daro, Mortimer Wheeler, agree that the city's demise occurred very rapidly, without the usual processes of gradual decline. During excavations, bricks that had melted were found. The melting of bricks made using the technology of that time required the impact of immense temperature force, the melting on the discovered bricks was also directed in one direction from the center of the city to the outskirts. In other words, the temperature impact originated in the center of the city, the epicenter, and spread across the city like a wave. Here is how this event is described in the ancient Indian epic, the Mahabharata. The lethal Brahmastra spewing streams of flame. Its power is like that of a thousand Indra's thunderbolts, and it destroys all living things around was released. The flame, devoid of smoke, spread in all directions with an all-destroying force. The scorching column of smoke and flame, as dazzling as ten thousand suns, rose into the sky in all its awe-inspiring grandeur, unfolding like a beach umbrella from the sun. It was the iron thunderbolt, the harbinger of death, turning all the people of the Vrishni and Andhaka, Mohenjo-Daro, clans into ashes. Their bodies were burned. Those who survived lost their hair and nails. Ceramic items cracked without visible reasons, and all the birds in the vicinity turned white. Within a few hours, all the food became poisoned. Fleeing from this fire, warriors threw themselves into the river to cleanse themselves and their equipment. Other evidence. There is reason to believe that many deserts in the world are man-made, and in reality, they are traces of an ancient nuclear war. For example, the Karakums in Slavic folklore, in the Yaralo book, are the dwelling place of the goddess Mara, where the sickle of Mara is kept, capable of killing even immortals. With that sickle, the entire life of the desert was mowed, and the cities were later buried in sand. Similarly, the Sahara Desert in Africa seems to have not formed naturally, but was the result of a technological catastrophe, the same War of the Gods. Ancient Egyptian myths also narrate about that war. In them, the sun god Ra and the rain goddess Tefnut battle the fire serpent Apophis. When Apophis prevails, a drought begins and cities are buried in sand. Desert with everlasting lakes of volcanic lava is nearby, in Ethiopia, in the Danakil Depression. According to local legends incorporated into the Ethiopian Book of Enoch, it is precisely here that the past battle of angels and demons erupted and will erupt in the future. And then, at the end of the world, the demon behemoth and the serpent leviathan will emerge from the lava. As for Australia and traces of a nuclear catastrophe on this barren continent, it's worth mentioning separately because it seems to have suffered the most in that nuclear war. Deserts and arid territories covering up to half of Australia's landmass speak of it. Also, 
the unusual fauna, marsupials, monotremes, kangaroos, and others, not found anywhere else. Perhaps they appeared as a result of mutations caused by increased radiation. The same applies to the Aboriginal people of Australia. Ancient skulls of Australians, dating back 40,000 years, had a thickness of only 0.5 centimeters, while the cranial bone of modern Aborigines reaches 1.5 centimeters, and modern skulls exhibit a much more primitive structure. This indicates the degradation of the skull-forming system due to mutations. Mysterious diversity. Did you know that a million years ago, Earth wasn't inhabited by just one species, the ancestor of humans according to Darwin, but rather by dozens of upright walking species? In Southeast Asia, the Javanthropes, formerly known as Pithecanthropes, resided, discovered as the very first representatives of the Homo genus of this anthropological type back in the 19th century by Eugene Dubois. They were quite large, 150, 170 centimeters tall and up to 70 kilograms in weight, large-headed, brain volume up to 1,000 cubic centimeters. Further north, in southeastern China, the Yuanmu people lived. In North Africa, the Atlantrops, fairly primitive erectus, coexisted with quite progressive Homo antecessors, predecessor humans for that time. They weren't predecessors of later humans, as discovered in the 21st century. Instead, they were a sister group to our lineage, which includes Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. Nevertheless, they were indeed people with a capital P, surpassing both in tool production and in human facial features of contemporary erectus. Eastern Africa was inhabited by erectus individuals who became direct ancestors of our lineage. Later, they moved northwest, where they diverged into the ancestral lines of sapiens and Neanderthals Denisovans. The former unequivocally stayed in Africa, while the latter, a bit later, ventured into Europe and Asia. The ancestral line exhibited typical erectus parameters, 150, 170 centimeters in height, 50, 70 kilograms in weight, and a brain volume of 900, 1,000 cubic centimeters. Apart from erectus, the planet was populated by even more primitive human species a million years ago. In Eastern Africa, the last ergasters, 99% being our direct ancestors, and even habilis individuals closer to Australopithecus than Homo, spent their final years. In the Caucasus, remnants of the Homo Georgius or Homo Dmanisi population persisted, a relict species closely related to habilis. The inevitable question arises, what happened to all this diversity of species? For instance, archaeologists date fossilized mice to 125 million years ago, and the so-called dawn horse is dated to 33 million years ago. These fauna species have survived until our days. Could it be that other Homo erectus species disappeared because they were a kind of genetic project by extraterrestrial intelligence, which chose only our species to continue the experiment? Ancient Megalithic Structures The presence of ancient megalithic structures, such as Stonehenge and the pyramids, raises intriguing questions about the knowledge and capabilities of ancient civilizations. These structures display precise astronomical alignments, suggesting a sophisticated understanding of celestial movements. Some theorists propose that these monuments served not only as cultural or religious symbols, but also as advanced technological devices harnessing cosmic energies. This challenges the conventional view of ancient societies and implies a level of knowledge that surpasses our current understanding. Many researchers claim that the existence of megalithic structures with astronomical precision hints at the possibility that ancient civilizations possessed advanced scientific knowledge, potentially acquired or guided by external intelligences. Unexplained genetic leaps in Homo sapiens evolution. The sudden and unexplained genetic leaps in the evolution of Homo sapiens, such as the rapid development of cognitive abilities and technological advancements, remain a mystery. While conventional theories attribute these leaps to natural selection, some alternative perspectives suggest the intervention of extraterrestrial forces. The idea proposes that key advancements in human evolution, such as the emergence of language and complex toolmaking, might have been catalyzed by external influences, challenging our understanding of the organic evolution of intelligent beings. 
Scientists consider that the enigma of unexplained genetic leaps invites us to consider alternative explanations for the rapid evolution of Homo sapiens, including the possibility of extraterrestrial intervention in shaping the intellectual and technological prowess of our species. As we navigate the corridors of time and the fragments of ancient narratives, the enigma of our origins deepens. The discovery of Homo naledi, the alignment of planets and the peculiarities of our solar system, the echoes of ancient wars of gods, whispered through myths and evidenced in the ruins of Mohenjo-daro, compel us to ponder about proto-civilizations and who created our world. The Earth, bearing the scars of a potential nuclear past, challenges us to contemplate the possibility that we are not the first intelligent inhabitants of this planet. In this quest for knowledge, the veil of uncertainty may never lift entirely, but the journey itself becomes a testament to the enduring curiosity that fuels our exploration of the mysteries that surround us. That's all the facts for today. We'll get back to you in a couple days with a new dizzying investigation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to always be aware of the most mysterious and amazing events of civilization.